plasmid is a circular, non-chromosomal segment of DNA that exists in some bacteria. Biologists can manipulate plasmids in a test tube and introduce these synthetic plasmids into bacteria. The plasmids geneticists usually use have a selectable marker such as an antibiotic resistance gene, an origin of replication, a multiple cloning site or polylinker that has many known restriction enzyme sites, and a gene or DNA sequence of interest that is inserted into the multiple cloning site. These artificial plasmids are used as vectors to replicate or express the particular genes or DNA sequences of interest that have been inserted into the plasmids. Plasmids are introduced into bacteria through a process called transformation. Although bacterial transformation is far from 100% efficient, antibiotic selection for cells carrying the plasmid of interest is very efficient. Since bacteria replicate plasmid DNA before each cell division, and since some plasmids are present in several copies per cell, a simple overnight culture of bacteria can yield vast numbers of plasmid DNA molecules. For this reason, bacterial cells can serve as factories for making large amounts of plasmid DNA and the DNA sequence of interest. In order to extract plasmid DNA from bacteria, biologists use a plasmid isolation kit, sometimes called a plasmid mini prep kit. This kit consists of a variety of buffers and a column that binds to the plasmid DNA to purify it. Biologists begin with an overnight liquid culture of transformed bacteria carrying the desired plasmid. First, they separate the bacterial cells from the liquid media. Then, they resuspend the cells in a resuspension buffer and lyse, or break open, the cells to release the plasmids with a lysis buffer. A neutralization buffer is added to precipitate cellular debris, but leave the plasmid DNA in solution. The tube is centrifuged to separate the solid precipitate, which will be discarded from the liquid supernatant. The supernatant containing the plasmid DNA is passed through a spin column containing a silica matrix. The plasmid DNA binds to the silica matrix, while the rest of the supernatant passes through the column and is discarded. The column is then washed with wash buffer to remove any remaining contaminants. Finally, an elution buffer is added to release the plasmid DNA from the silica matrix. This flow through is caught in a fresh tube. The final solution contains isolated plasmid DNA. Each step of this protocol will now be demonstrated and explained in detail. Label the 1.5 milliliter microfuge tubes you will need. You will label one tube per culture. Using sterile five milliliter pipettes, Pipette 1.5 milliliters of each culture into the appropriate labeled microfuge tube. Use a fresh pipette for each culture to avoid contamination. You will now harvest the bacterial cells from the culture by centrifugation. Place the microfuge tubes in a tabletop microcentrifuge and spin for one minute at full speed. Be sure to balance the centrifuge before starting it. This means that an identical tube containing an identical volume of solution should be directly across from your tube. Don't forget to secure the inner lid if your centrifuge requires one. At the end of the centrifugation, a small pellet will be at the bottom of the tube. This is made up of the bacterial cells that contain the plasmid DNA you want. The clear liquid supernatant is LB, the bacterial growth media, with an antibiotic such as ampicillin. Remove all traces of growth medium by pipetting or pouring out and discarding the supernatant. Don't worry, the pellet will not move as long as you don't touch it. In some cases, you may want to spin down an additional 1.5 milliliters of bacterial culture in the same tube to increase plasmid DNA yield. Resuspend the pelleted bacterial cells in 250 microliters of the resuspension buffer. Be sure to use proper pipetting technique when you do this. After you have added the 250 microliters of resuspension buffer, mix until no cell clumps are visible in the suspension. The resuspension buffer used in this step contains RNase, which will degrade RNA from the mini prep in the next step when the cells are lysed. Once all of the pellet in your tube has been resuspended, carefully add 250 microliters of the lysis buffer. Mix thoroughly by inverting the tube four to six times. The solution should become viscous and slightly clear. Do not allow the lysis to continue for more than five minutes. 
do not vortex at this point, or else the genomic DNA will be sheared into small fragments and will contaminate the plasmid DNA. If you are using a chiagen kit, the cell suspension will turn blue after the addition of the lysis buffer. Mix the solution until you have a uniformly colored suspension. The lysis buffer contains a mixture of the base, sodium hydroxide, and the detergent, sodium dodecyl sulfate, or SDS. The SDS dissociates the lipid components of the cell. The cell membrane, which is made up of lipids, breaks open, or lyses. The contents of the cell, including the cell's chromosomes and plasmid DNA, spill out into the solution. The SDS and high pH of the solution then denature the chromosomal and plasmid DNA. Working quickly, add 350 microliters of neutralization buffer and mix immediately and thoroughly by inverting the tube four to six times. Do not vortex. The solution should become cloudy. If using a chiagen kit, mix until all traces of blue are gone and the solution is colorless. This neutralization buffer contains potassium acetate and acetic acid. The potassium acetate returns the pH to neutral, allowing the DNA strands to renature. The long single strands of chromosomal DNA get tangled with other cellular debris such as proteins and lipids to form an insoluble precipitate. Meanwhile, the smaller and still intertwined plasmid DNA strands quickly rehybridize and remain in solution. Now close the tubes and centrifuge them for 10 minutes at full speed. Remember to balance your centrifuge. While your samples are centrifuging, label one spin column for each culture you started with. Each spin column consists of the column set inside an empty collecting tube. Label both the collecting tube and the spin column. After 10 minutes, a white pellet should appear at the bottom and side of the microfuge tube. This pellet consists of the proteins, lipids, and genomic DNA that precipitated out when you added the neutralization buffer. The plasmid DNA that you want is still in solution in the supernatant. The supernatant is what you want to keep. Add the clear supernatant to the spin column by pipetting or pouring the supernatant directly into the column. You can now discard the microfuge tube containing the pellet. There is no cap for the spin column, so place it carefully in a microcentrifuge. Remember to balance the centrifuge. Spin for one minute at full speed. During the spin, label clean 1.5 mil microfuge tubes to hold your final purified plasmid DNA. Be sure to include your initials and the date. Once the spin is done, remove the spin column and collecting tube from the centrifuge. Dump out the flow through that is now in the collecting tube and place the column back in the collecting tube. The spin column contains a silica membrane that will tightly bind the plasmid DNA that is in the salty, buffered supernatant. Any remaining RNA, proteins, or other macromolecules pass through the membrane and are found in the flow-through after centrifugation. At this point, the DNA is bound to the silica matrix in the column. To remove the salts left over from the buffer, wash the spin column by adding 750 microliters of wash buffer, which contains approximately 70% ethanol. The salts are soluble in 70% ethanol, but the DNA is insoluble. Centrifuge for one minute. The insoluble plasmid DNA remains bound to the silica membrane, while the flow-through carries away the salt. Discard the flow-through. Residual ethanol from the wash buffer may inhibit subsequent enzymatic reactions, so it is important to dry the spin column with a second spin. Centrifuge again for one minute to remove any residual wash buffer. When you are done, Place the spin column in the clean, appropriately labeled 1.5 milliliter microfuge tube. Your plasmid DNA is still on the spin column. Discard the collection tube with any flow through. Add 50 microliters of elution buffer directly to the membrane in the spin column. Let the spin column stand one minute while the DNA becomes solubilized. Then centrifuge the column and tube for one minute. The microfuge tube caps will not close, so be sure that the caps are facing toward the center of the centrifuge so that they do not break off while spinning. After centrifugation, you should see about 50 microliters of clear, colorless liquid in the bottom of your microcentrifuge tube. This contains purified plasmid DNA.
Discard the spin column, but keep and store your tube of purified plasmid DNA.